have a word with Thomas now. I'm, I'm confining the conversation this hour. I'm not going to explain why again. To people that work in supermarkets and British gas engineers. Thomas, which are you? Uh, I'm a British gas engineer. Why did you go on strike on Thursday? Uh, I'm going on strike because um, Chris O'Shea is threatening, as the CEO of British Gas, he's threatening to fire and rehire us if we don't accept his new terms and conditions. What are the new terms and conditions and how do they differ from the ones that you've currently got? Uh, well, first of all, they will see us working three to four extra weeks a year with no uplifting pay. Okay, so it's effectively like 156 extra hours of overtime that mm. we will not get paid for despite the fact that the last few years they bring out an overtime scheme every winter to meet the customer demand, because as I'm sure you can appreciate, boilers can break down more in the winter. Uh, well, and equally, it's, it's more important to get them fixed quick in the winter as well. E exactly. So every year they bring out an overtime scheme where they pay us for those hours, OK? And you that scheme usually ranges from 75 to 150 extra hours over that six-month period. Right. And we get reimbursed for that for that for that money. So, so, so sim simply put, you're going to put in a ton of overtime for which you currently get paid, and they're telling you that unless you sign a new contract in which you won't get paid for that, then you can you can hit the road, Jack. Yeah, but that's the tip of the iceberg. That's, that is the, literally the tip of the iceberg. Remember, I, I I will be inviting Centrica to respond to to, to anything that you say. Yeah, that's fine. No, I know. Um, the, that, that is the tip of the iceberg. But they, they during the pandemic, people, the engineers were going into COVID, COVID positive households. Yes. Okay, they were delivering food parcels for the Trestle Trust, which British Gas were happy to pick up the positive publicity for. It was all over their marketing campaign. The Trestle Trust logo next to the British Gas logo, and meanwhile, in the background, Chris, uh, Matthew Bateman, and the senior leadership team were plotting to, to uh, rip out our terms and conditions from underneath us, and then to cap all that off. They refuse to negotiate with us. And if we don't accept those, they're going to fire and rehire us. It's, it's unacceptable. It's nothing, it's nothing more than bullying. Um, I, I, I've got a statement from them, which I'll, I'll read shortly, but I, I, without even looking at it, I, can, I presume that they've started arguing that the mandate for the strike isn't, isn't high enough and that some people have agreed to the terms and conditions already. So what are you complaining about? That, that, that is corporate spin. There, there, there are, there well, are, five, there are over count. five... There are, there are over 5,000 engineers out on strike today. They are not at work. They are not. We want to be at work. We want to be at work repairing our customers' boilers. We love our job, but we can't do it because they refuse to negotiate it. That, that's, that's his job. He's a CEO. He, one, of his, one of his big, big jobs is of a, being part of a multi-international company is to negotiate with a trade union, and he cannot do that. He refuses to do that. And that is bullying. A Centrica spokeswoman said, we've done everything we can with the GMB to avoid industrial action. While we've made great progress with our other unions, sadly the GMB leadership seems intent on causing disruption to customers during the coldest weekend of the year. Amid a global health crisis and in the middle of a national lockdown, we have strong contingency plans to ensure we will still be there for customers. I'm I just trying to establish whether or not they have addressed your central allegation stroke complaint which is that you are going to be required to work unpaid essentially doing overtime that you are currently paid for i can't see any direct reference to but they won't reference it will they why would why would they reference it well it's in their was, interest to reference they it. they would if they it was true no, they've, they've, they have tried their best to keep this out, out of the news as far as far as they can. Over 83%, yeah. here it is, over 83% of our workforce have already accepted our new terms. And, of course, if your description of the, 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 the threat to your livelihood by not accepting them is true, then you can understand why people might have accepted it. Base pay yeah, and pensions have... are protected, they claim, but I can't see anything addressing the central complaint which is that you're how being... can you how how can you how can you ask someone to do 156 extra hours a year without paying them without affecting base pay yes they haven't they haven't affected our hourly rate i'll grant you that but when you ask someone to do extra hours a year what are you doing you're affecting their base pay it, it's just it's just fancy corporate wording it's just the way they shuffle it about but the bottom the, the bottom line is 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 that we are working covid covid positive households okay and and and, and they have done this behind our back how that's, does it end that's, that's the bottom line how does it end? Well, it ends. That it, we, we're, we're asking Chris to drop the fire and rehire, to get back around the table and negotiate with a trade union. It's not difficult. We've done it for years. I've worked here for 10 years. Every single time there's a pay deal, we negotiate with him. Even even his predecessor, Ian Conn, who, 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 who we paid millions of pounds as he left, he got a 44% pay rise as, as, as the stock price was plummeting, plummeting. It's devastating. They made £900 million last year. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. 
just forgive me. I, I, I'm being a bit thick. Did the strike start last Thursday, or does it start this Thursday? No, it started last Thursday. Yeah. This is the fifth. This is no, the that's fifth what I thought. To day. Today's the final day. It's just that when you said we're coming out, but you, you were speaking, I thought I'd got that wrong. But no, so we'll have to wait and see whether or not it has any of the desired effects. Although it seems pertinent to mention that uh, I think I think we're looking at a nine hundred and one million pound operating profit on the one hand. And on the other hand, of course, in the context of British politics, we now have a Home Secretary, a Foreign Secretary, a Business Secretary and a Secretary of State for International Trade who co-authored a book stating that British workers are among the laziest in the world. 12.18. 21 minutes after 12, so one of each so far, a supermarket worker and a British gas engineer. Um, what's it like being on the front line? What is it like dealing with the consequences of deeply, deeply irresponsible people using phrases like face nappies and muzzles what's it like when the results of their rhetoric reach your supermarket oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three and I, I used to say and I, i'm a little bit nostalgic for the days when these were the most important issues facing our country i used to say that if you're opposed to every strike ever you are forgive me you're an idiot but equally, if you're in favour of every strike ever, you are also an idiot. So there, there is a time and a place for industrial action, and intelligent people will do their best to avail themselves of all of the facts and, uh, and arrive, therefore, at a, at a conclusion. Obviously, in <laughs> Rupert Murdoch land, all strikes are awful, <laughs> which is why you end up with a Home Secretary, a Foreign Secretary... Uh, Secretary of State for International Trade and a Business Secretary co-authoring a book claiming that you are among the worst, most lazy workers, the laziest workers in the world. Uh, I mean, it goes hand in hand and it's going to get worse. It, but if the input we're receiving with regard to the British gas engineers striking over a dispute over contracts, the uh, report is that the company is trying to push through pay cuts by threatening to fire workers so it's a, it's a kind of my way or the highway ultimatum i've read the relevant parts of the statement from centrica uh and th th their argument is that they're trying to put protect jobs by threatening to fire people which is you know um plausible chris is in skipton chris supermarkets what's going on um, what isn't going on? Um, I'm an ex-police officer as well. Really? Um, first, first time caller to LBC. You're so very welcome. Thank Where you, have you for been? taking me call. Where uh, have you been all my life? <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, 25, 30 years on the beat. Uh, retired, pushing two girls through uni, gets a cushy job in the Yorkshire Dills in a supermarket. Yes. And we get COVID. Um, we're struggling. We're struggling. We're getting lots and lots of holiday makers, well, tourists, mm. day trippers, coming out every day, and the only, all they turn around to us and say is, uh, oh, I'm, uh, I can travel unlimited miles to exercise, and that's the mixed messaging that's plagued us from day one. I didn't know. Did the um, mask wearing, then, isn't at the top of your list of concerns? It isn't at the top of our list. We, we have a company, we're, we're, a, we're a national supermarket, yes. without giving the name, but no, of course. we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to, 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 to engage with them, but it goes against the grain with me. I, if somebody comes in not wearing a mask, uh, I say, look, are you able to wear a face covering in the shop today? If they start on a, on a launch at me, they've got a medical, I'm not interested. I say, that's fine, that's yeah, fine. 90% yeah. have forgotten, 90% have forgotten, and they say, oh, come ever so sorry. Even now, Ma still now, because I get that, because we should have got used to it by now, Chris, we, is what we I'm have sort of... got used. Yeah. We have got used to it. We, 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 we perhaps get three or four a day up, up in the deals. It's not too bad, but, but but what plagues us is is the the, the, the volume the, the volume of people who are coming through your doors when they live tens or possibly even hundreds absolutely, of miles away. Absolutely, and we've got an elderly. But hang on, mate. Aren't they? I mean, as long as they've got a kid in the back of the car and a COVID-infected wife in the passenger seat, they're just doing what any father would do. <laughs> but that's exactly what it's like. That's exactly what it's like. I mean, I, we're on the we're on the brink of we were just. Cumbria is 20 mile up the road, yeah. and they went from tier two, can you remember the old tier days, good old days? <laughs> they went they went tier two to tier four, Yeah, just before the lockdown. Because, and that be, because this idea of, of it not 
crossing borders, so to speak, even borders oh, between yeah. towns and counties. That was the that was the last great stupidity of 2020, wasn't it? Can I ask, are you on the door? Are you in security at the supermarket? No, no. But we have a traffic light system, so it limits the numbers. We're supposed to have a one-way system, which seems to work well. Uh, but I'm on the shop floor, so... Okay. Uh, we we do like I say we we do try and well I I challenge them perhaps I shouldn't really but I, I I've I've worked twenty five thirty well I've been thirty years in the police I'm yeah. due to draw my pension once my last daughter uh, finishes at uni. Uh, <laughs> Just uh, nearly there. I, one I, last push, Chris. One last push. I ain't going to screw my pension up for, for, for some COVID. COVID uh, no, I, I, although compared to Louise in Watford, uh, I mean you're having a very different experience. I hope this doesn't sound crass. If I had to choose, I'd rather work. I'd rather do your job than hers. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and this is just all the different layers of problems, isn't it? it is, I mean, we, we get the odd idea, and I mean, I had one in the other week, you know, can you wear a mask? No, yeah. uh, I don't want to, what you've got to do, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's a condition of entry, but, I, you know, it kicks a display over, and before you know it, you've got a lot of cans of beer, but, but yeah. it's, it's kicking a display, it's not kicking me or my colleagues. But the thing I want to emphasise... Go on. James, is the unlimited travel to exercise. It's plagued us from day one. It really has. And you speak to the, the guys up in, uh, who live up in Cumbria and Keswick and whatnot. Yes, the tourism is good when, when, when the sun's shining and we haven't got, a, 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 we haven't got a, a plague that's killing millions of people in the world. Yes, But yes. now we just want them to stay away. And I watched Johnson the other... I refuse to call him Boris. Yeah. I watched Johnson the other night and he was bumbling and, and, I, and I said, what's he going to say about exercise? Mm, we prefer it if you uh, stay local. You need to tell them. I've got small I'll do the rubbish impressions on this show, thank you very much. Get back in your lane. James, I've got a small house in Spain. We haven't been to it for, uh, for, for a year, but I've got friends over there, Spanish friends, small village, and they locked down. They locked down properly, and it was not allowed to... I don't, you see, the guy, this is the problem between rules and guidelines, because I don't think, I mean, I'm reading it now, access to outdoor exercise, but with members of your own household or one member of another household, no time limit currently for how long you can exercise for, and you should only do it once a day, but locally is the word they use. So, well, that's, it's open to misinterpretation, yeah. and what's local, in Spain, they said, right, I think it was two kilometres, you, you do your exercise, it's one hour a day, Two, km two kilometres from your front door. It's yes. not open to any misinterpretation. It's there. It's black and white. I mean, I feel for the police. I really, really do. This I government got rid do of, as this well. Government got rid of, this government got rid of 20,000 police officers. I was on the beat at 58 year old yeah. with 25 years service, 20, well, 28 years experience. These yeah. now, you see them on the news, the, the, the different police forces are pushing the through recruitment. Things, using a drone, got, arresting someone for drinking tea, you know, I mean, and it's not their flipping always fault. Get them. There will have been hundreds of thousands, I mean, I'm not making an apology from no, other no, police, no. those days are gone. Yeah. There will have been hundreds of thousands of engagements. and That went off brilliantly. Yet. It's like the old um, parking up outside a sandwich shop, isn't it, and getting a photograph taken and ending up in the sun as evidence. <laughs> Exactly. that every single police officer in the land is constantly skiving exactly. and eating sandwiches. Exactly. It's a miracle yeah, there's yeah. anyone in prison, let alone Absolutely. in court, or actually there aren't Absolutely. many people in court. Or the firefighters, imagine Absolutely. what the firefighters feel like when they're photographed. You send an appliance out to get a cat out of the tree because the appliance is out and they're giving the ladders a bit of a stretch and the, and, the, and the men and women on the appliance are doing a bit of on-the-job training. But, of course, you filter it through the lens of the right-wing media and it's evidence that firefighters are all swinging the lead, which brings us back to the British gas workers because it means that if their firefighters ever take industrial action or the police, who, of course, are prevented by law from taking industrial action, ever start complaining about their terms and conditions... In moves the right-wing media to shut you all down, culminating in Theresa May standing up in front of a police federation conference in Manchester in about 2005 and claiming that cuts to numbers would have no impact whatsoever upon the force's ability to police the country. J James, my, my wife, a retired police officer as well, she was in safeguard in, in Bradford, in the city centre there, yeah. and she saw the cutbacks that, that, that went on, and, and it was around about the time when, when Theresa was standing yeah. up at the police said conference, and she saw saw the cutback, not just to the police, but just to, to, to the charities, to Bernardo's, to, 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 to places like that, that were affecting these kids. She worked uh, uh, with, with children, with girls who were at risk of child sexual exploitation, yes. and the funding that was pulled was horrendous, and she worked with social services and probation and whatnot, and they were, they were on the knees, they were on the knees.
And it's and fair it's to say that bad. things haven't got better. Chris, we've covered a lot of ground in that call, so I look forward to your to your second appearance on the on the station or, or indeed the programme. Thank you, mate. And take care of yourself as well. Always important. Half past past twelve is the time. And Thomas Watts has your headlines. Twelve thirty five is the time. It's fair to say that if you are on the telly or the radio or even writing a newspaper column, you are li- unlikely to encounter the direct consequences of your decision to coin phrases like muzzle or face nappy or lockdown sceptic. Who does face the immediate consequences of your rhetoric? Well, today we're looking at supermarket workers. We are also having a look at the British gas industrial action, which comes to a close today. Um, and and just, just as ever, giving you the information you need to reach an informed decision. Because if there's anything that the current... Uh, um, it's not just the government, is it? If there's anything that the current winners, so much winning, hashtag winning, if there's anything that the current winners hate more, it's the idea of you having the information that you need to make an informed decision. Darren is in Sidcup. British Gas. Darren, what's going on? Hi, James. Thank Hello. you for letting us have a platform uh, today on the show. Always, I just mate. wanted to pick on uh, what you said about British Gas's response and a majority of the employees have uh, accepted these new terms. Mm. The terms are different depending on their role. Obviously, the field-based role, which is what I am, yes. uh, is hardest hit. It's 156 hours, which equates to four weeks at uh, worth of hours for no money. So it does affect your salary. Their spend doesn't affect your, your base pay, but no matter how they word it, we'll be working 156 hours for no more money. And, and, and they're hours that if you worked them last year, you'd have got paid for. Yes, right. would have got paid for Seems fairly clear that, and I'm reading through their, their, their statement and their background for context and their further context, and I'm not seeing any challenge. I, I, I wondered how long it would be before they mentioned the fact that you're on a, a fairly decent whack as qualified engineers, as if that somehow undermines your cause. Um, and here it is, at the average of £50,000 a year, and we're not reducing base pay. I want them to tell me whether or not it's true that you're required to work 156 hours unpaid that you are currently paid for and it, it, it yeah. seems quite straightforward to me but you know i'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer necessarily darren there's no way they can thrust it around we, we will be working from april the first unless we don't accept it in which case we'll be fired we'll be working 156 hours for no more money and what's even worse is 86 percent of the employees voted in favor of industrial action and even then the managers rang round individuals to try and use bully boy tactics to try and divide us. Well, again, they say that 50% of, 52% of the eligible GMB membership has voted to support strike action, which um, they call it, like, here it is, it's almost like you could write this stuff without so, making the phone so calls. A it's that, a very weak mandate, they say. That 50% will include managers. 52%. So you, you, you take that, obviously, managers will have their own hidden agendas, but possibly, but from the field base, the guys that are out doing this day in, day out, going into COVID homes, supporting the Trussell Trust, overwhelmingly support industrial action. And we don't want to be on strike. We don't want to see our customers having to go onto social media and say they can't get anybody and then having a contract to go round. We want to go and use the van. It's one phone call away from Chris O'Shea and we'll all be back. And, and you, if, if he were simply to say you can carry on the same terms and conditions that you're currently on, that would be the end of the industrial action? Just no. What, what he's doing is he, he's negotiated with a loaded gun to our head. Yes. He said, these are your terms and conditions. I'll negotiate with GMB, but I'm going to issue a Section 188 fire and rehire, and if you don't accept them by the 1st of April, you've, you've gone. So my wife's a hairdresser. Yeah. She's not working. She, she, she hasn't been able to work yes. in lockdown, and now I've got the pressure... Or possibly by the first of April, being out of a job. So you would take it that far, would you? Because I don't. I never. If we if we were mates, and and I know you know we're not enemies or anything like that. But if we were mates, I wouldn't know what to say to you. Because because how far do you, this is what they're banking on as well, isn't it? Perhaps if That's I've right. understood the facts correctly, is that you're going to be left, you and your wife, because you'll make the decision together. I'm sure are going to be left potentially with that choice between sticking up for your rights or surrendering. I think if you surrender, you don't get anywhere. Yes, I'm willing to take it all the way to the 1st of April, and if that means I'm no longer a British Gas employee, so be it. I think uh, from the consensus I've got, I'm on the picket line today. The general public have been fantastic. We've had teas, we've had coffees, yeah. tunes in, waving. 
the support is, is unreal. It's just what worries me is you've got a, an MD that uses the media blackout because of COVID and America and uses the word as a net net win for the company. Yes, well, he'd, he'd no doubt dispute that, but obviously it's a statement of fact to describe the uh, current concerns of, of the media on, on this side of the Atlantic and, and clearly COVID and Donald Trump are way higher up the list. I mean, to be honest with you, mate, that could be a mixed blessing because if it was getting more media coverage, it would be from... A media that is, you know, about 80% biased against any form of collective bargaining or industrial action. So be careful what you wish for, Darren. As my friends, in the, fi- my friends in the fire any, service will tell you. <laughs> any publicity is good publicity. For, for yeah, me, fair enough. these changes are just a step too far. More hours, less money, no ability to plan family time more than six weeks. So we'll have a six-week roster. If you want to plan something on the seventh week, you can't because you don't know what shift you're going to be working. No. We all understand that there needs to be a change, but we need to work together and not have this gun held to our head. None of us want to be on strike. The last thing, we're all financially worse off for going on strike. Yes. And we all love the brand. That's why I've been here 16 years. The majority of engineers, this is a job for life. Yes. The CEOs will come and go. In my time, I've had six pension changes, five condition changes, and about six CEOs. So they'll come two, three years, get their large payoff, in the likes of Chris O'Shea, last year he earned 300000 this year he's earning 700000 But yet he wants to cut our terms. And in that same time, he was our finance director, and he's seen our share price drop 75%, from £1.40 to the lowest of 35p. Again, I've, got, I've not got the numbers in front of me, nor have I got Mr O'Shea on the line, so I just put that in as a, as a, as a qualification and a caveat, and I, I'll read out their full statement again but um I, I think that the consensus seems to be fairly incontrovertible and the, and the basic contention is that you are expected to sign up to work hours unpaid for which you would currently be paid and if you refuse to do that to the tune of 156 hours a year um if he was open to negotiations why did that file the section 188 he went into them negotiations while filing the section 188 so you, you you're going to negotiate but if you if i don't like what you're negotiating you're going to get fired on the first of april okay yeah well i'm a lot clearer now than i was before but i can't i can't claim to be any happier darren you take care of yourself all right and do Andrew, uh, d- thank d- you d- very much d- Jane. D- d- don't think that i'm patronizing you actually no leave it you're you, you're you're a grown-up you can work it out for yourself all right mate Mind how you go. 12.42 is the time. I'll read you the full statement, just because I, I'm a great fan of dotting I's and crossing T's. We've done everything we can with the GMB to avoid industrial action. Whilst we've made great progress with our other unions, sadly the GMB leadership seems intent on causing disruption to customers during the coldest time of the year. Um, amid a global health crisis and in the middle of a national lockdown. Over 83% of our workforce have already accepted our new terms in which base pay and pensions are protected, including a significant majority of GMB members. Uh, This shows most of our people understand that our business needs to change because customer needs are changing. GMB's mandate for strike action is weak. They are fighting against modernisation and changes which will help help to protect well-paid jobs in the long term and are doing so at a time that our country needs everyone to pull together. 12.43, back to the supermarkets. Ali is in Tower Hamlets. Ali, what's going on? Hello, hello, James. How are you doing? Pretty good, Ali. What's on your mind? I'm, I'm been, I've been working in the, on the front line for a supermarket, for a supermarket since the initial lockdown in March. Yes. And it's, it's actually ridiculous, like, how some of the customers are. Go on. Especially, like, if they know how serious the situation is. So what, sort of, what sort of things are you witnessing? Because I, I, I could get my head around people behaving stupidly at the beginning, people behaving irresponsibly at the beginning, back in March, and a bit of confusion on the way. That. But you'd think but now, now everybody had got the message. Yeah. We're about nine months in. They should be used to it. They should know with these, the numbers and the rates how serious this matter is. Um, something as simple as coming into the store with a mask, you know. We've got security cards, security security guards there who just hand it out but even then you see people wandering around with what no what annoys you the most well what annoys me the most is yeah i'll give you an example you know in the egg section right yeah we obviously customers there they they would open about 10 boxes worth of eggs there's about 10 different boxes yeah 
Oh, oh to check that the eggs it. aren't broken. But uh, is that, I mean, they'd be doing that all the time. You're, you're pointing out they should stop doing it now because of the dangers. Because, because look, they, they'll be touching 10 boxes of eggs <laughs> and they might not even buy one. Then another customer might buy one and... Do right, you know, you've taken me out to the break. I could, I, oh God, what's that got to do with the price of eggs? Being a famous rhetorical question at the end of the conversation. It is just this absolute absence of... And I'll give you another example. Go on, quickly. Uh, a cost, like, they don't keep their distance as well. Like, a customer would tap me on my shoulder, yeah. come right to my face, ask me. I'm thinking, you, sh you should know about the distance. What about masks, know. Ali? Where are we on masks? Masks. Uh, people just, you know, you don't know whether to question them or not about if they're lying or not about these uh, medical And we conditions. know, we can see evidence on, on media, social and mainstream that, that people are swinging the lead on that one. They are downloading these exemption certificates despite not actually really truly being eligible for them. Uh, 12.40, Ali, take care. 12.45 is the time. 12.49 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC, where the I mean, grim tidings, really, from the front line, supermarket workers, essentially being the people who bear the brunt of the very odd attention-seeking rhetoric from people in my profession who, who um, insist that wearing masks is silly and lockdowns don't work, lockdown sceptics. I mean, people who deny the existence of the virus are a different strand i think of the same problem it's important to to make these distinctions but uh, I, maybe i'm just a old-fashioned soul and the simple exhortation to um err on the side of caution uh, with masks i said from the start what's the worst that can happen if they turn out to not have a big effect on things then what have we lost by wearing one i still don't know the answer to that question uh, but we are where we are. And the British gas engineers who have, or are just coming today to the end of a five-day strike after essentially being told that if they don't agree to work 156 hours unpaid, hours for which they would currently be paid, it's overtime though, so they may not reach up as high as 156, then, uh, then they can frankly expect to be handed their sandwiches wrapped in a roadmap. Let's go back to British gas and then head over to the supermarkets. Hopefully I'll have time before I clock off for the day to treat you to another little look at how Boris Johnson stands in comparison to the New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Remember, don't compare the countries, just compare the leadership, the messaging, the clarity. The clarity and the leadership. Roy is in Raynham. Roy, British Gas, what can you tell us? Hello, James. Hello, um, thanks for uh, for the time. Um, You're welcome. I'm we, sorry I didn't get on it sooner. I, I, I got I got a bit of a I got my nose tweaked a bit on Twitter about it. I should have spotted it towards the end of last week. But that's kind of the point the last fella made, isn't it? There's so much going on, it could sneak under the wire. That's exactly what's happening, and they're, and they're loving it at the moment. Mm. They're loving it. We, we, there's been leaked videos. I should add, Roy's not my real name. I'm actually worried about okay. any kind of action to come back after on me. Okay. So I've thought I better use a, a fake name. Fair enough. Um, but you probably shouldn't have told us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know, but it just Carry goes on. to show us. <laughs> it goes to show how scared I am of about course, it, uh, and then worried. Yes. And I've got to agree with Thomas and Darren. Darren really, really put a lot of the points across. Um, there's some bits that I think we've missed, though. Is it is you, you're going down the line that it's the overtime that we're going to get. We're going to be doing it for free, and that is something that is. You know, the extra hours, it's free time from them, mm. you know. But the truth is, they come out with a fire and rehire straight away. Straight away in July, um, pretty much from the get-go, that was on the table. If you don't do it, this is what we're going to do. So the whole time the GMB have, have had that gun to their head. And the GMB, they, they talk about the GMB like it's the, they're the people that, that it's affecting them in that room. Mm. We are the GMB. We are the GMB. And if we, allowed, if we don't stand up to this, and as a nation, the, the British public don't stand up to things like this. It will happen to other companies, and they will bring it well, down on them as well. people are suggesting other companies to which it has already happened. I, I haven't, uh, again, got the wherewithal in front of me to, to double-check, so I won't mention anything specifically on air. But that is the, the classic line, isn't it? Is it, if you put up with this, you, you, someone else will be next? That's the... That's, that's, the... that's right. They tried it with the British Airways. You know, these companies are making millions and millions of pounds of profit all the time, and we've got a pandemic on. Yeah, but the I pandemic mean, has... I mean, listen... Let me be the devil's advocate. The pandemic is going to have taken a chunk out of every business's revenue. It's going to have affected the share price and it's going to have affected profits um, mm. on, a, on an unprecedented scale. So there's... But, but not ours, James. Not really? ours, because we... Yeah, really. We're, I mean, who's not been using gas and electric the whole time? Is it that, is it that simple? Not been breaking down? 
I think it is. Yeah. They actually they actually furloughed us. So they got paid from the government as well. So a lot after after um, because you obviously engineers, we've all got families. So there was periods of time where we've all been furloughed at some point. So yes. they've got money from the government. They well, continue then, to get money from customers, yeah, you know? Yeah. No, I do. And just listen, just again, in the interest of full disclosure, Centrica's adjusted operating profit has fallen by 14% in the first half of 2020, with the beleaguered supplier pointing to the impact of COVID-19. So a large part of their rationale is that Mm. the business needs to change quite, quite dramatically. But, But it's not either or, is it? It's not like either the business doesn't change at all, or you take on these new terms and conditions. That seems to me a slightly disingenuous way of presenting it. And, and that's... 100%. That's, 100%. Yeah. 100%. The thing is, James, another thing that I think that the other boys didn't didn't really say or <laughs> say correctly is we, we've changed for the last 10 years. We've done it. We've had the pension cuts. You know, we've 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 done more hours. We're already doing the shifts, you know. Um, and and we, we've done all that because... Yes, for the company, mm. but because we actually, part of my job, what I love doing is, especially for old dears and old people <laughs> and, and people that are trying, getting in there <laughs> and fixing a boiler and getting it going for them. There's it's no better feeling than that, you know? I can, do you know, I do, actually. I can well imagine that because uh, you're, bringing, you're, bringing, you're literally bringing heat into their lives. Yeah, I feel like a hero. So, I like, bet you do. Well, I, this is why I, the frontline workers, you know, we, we probably forgot to include a lot. I'm going to crack on. You've, you've got, is there anything else you want to squeeze in? I think you played a blinder, Roy. Yeah, Roy, Roy. <laughs> All right, um, Roy. Yeah. <laughs> my, my no, day. I just, Go on. Just, just a real big thank you because, like you say, the media, it almost looks like a media blackout. And our picket line at the moment is on Facebook and Twitter. So yes. if anyone's got friends, family that work for British Gas and, and, and for all of us as, yes. British, as British workers, please share, just please share and get it out there because if it happens to us, it'll happen to other companies. And, and check the facts for yourself uh, is, is always helpful. And that's why I suggest that a, a media blackout could be a, a blessing in disguise because you, you know that... Industrial action is not often covered fairly and fully in in most of the British media, but who knows? Anyway, I'm glad to have been able to to um, get, you know give you a, a step ladder onto a platform. I, I wanted to end with a supermarket worker actually, so we'll just head to Andrew, who's in Bournemouth. Last word to you on this one, I think, Andrew, because I want to squeeze in that Boris Johnson and Jacinda Ardern montage. What can you tell us? Um, well, I work, James, I work in one of the um, big supermarkets, petrol filling stations, and we're one of the really busy ones. Um, and, but we've been told, and it's across the store as well for the checkout operators as well, we must not challenge customers if they're not wearing a mask. Um, I, I've heard that a lot, and you know, or you suspect, that a lot of the people wearing a mask have no reason not to. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't be sure, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're in a very small, enclosed environment. There's a team of 12 people there which covers shifts of about 18 hours for seven days a week. Good Lord. Um, all we're asking them to do is come in, put a mask on for two to three minutes. We're standing there wearing them for seven or eight hours. Uh, we're back to everything, aren't we? We're back to yeah. your Auntie Doris's Facebook page telling you that they're not necessary or they don't work or that, you know, that the, 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 the phone masks will give you coronavirus. Hang in there, mate. The vaccines are going to make life a lot easier for everybody. Yeah, sure will Right, and, and I wish there was something else I could say. All I'll do is remind you that the vaccines are the only thing that will save us from this man. It's, there were some countries who initially talked about herd immunity as a strategy. In New Zealand, we never, ever considered that as a possibility, ever. Um, herd immunity would have meant tens of thousands of New Zealanders mm. dying, and I simply would not tolerate that, and I don't think any New Zealander would. And it's important to recognise it's not to stop everybody getting it. You can't do that. It's not possible to stop everybody getting it. And it's also actually not desirable because you want some immunity in the population. And one of the theories is that, you know, uh, perhaps you could sort of take it on the chin, take it all in one in one go and allow the disease, as it were, to, to move through the, the population. Uh, I without really taking as many draconian measures. The situation here is moving at pace, and so must we. Actually, slightly counterintuitively, things like closing schools and stopping big gatherings don't work as well, perhaps, as, as people think. As of midnight Sunday, every person entering New Zealand, including returning New Zealand citizens and residents, will be required to enter self-isolation for 14 days. Everybody.
Well, there are 15,000 passengers still arriving every single day entering Britain. And the key part is that they are still entering with no checks, no measures, no tests, no mandatory quarantine. There is not even any advice for self-isolation. There is no requirement for that. It's always worth stressing with this that for the overwhelming majority of people, this is going to be uh, who get it. This is going to be a mild uh, to moderate uh, illness. Well, that's all right. And that's it from me for another day. We'll do it again tomorrow morning from 10. The next voice you will hear on LBC belongs to Sheila Fogarty.